I'm Tony. Today I'm going to be reading The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James. Chapter 6. Isabel Archer was a young person of many theories. Her imagination was remarkably active. It had been her fortune to possess a finer mind than most of the persons among whom her lot was cast to have a larger perception of surrounding facts and to care for knowledge that was tinged with the unfamiliar. It is true that among her contemporaries, she passed for a young woman of extraordinary profundity. For these excellent people never withheld their admiration from a reach of intellect of which they themselves were not conscious and spoke of Isabel as a prodigy of learning, a creature reported to have read the classic authors in translations. Her paternal aunt, Mrs. Varian, once spread the rumor that Isabel was writing a book, Mrs. Varian having reverence for books, and averred that the girl would distinguish herself in print. Mrs. Varian thought highly of literature, for which she entertained that esteemed, that is, is connected with a sense of privation. Her own large house, remarkable for its assortment of mosaic tables and decorated ceilings, was unfurnished with a library, and in a way of printed volumes contained nothing but half a dozen novels in paper on a shelf in the apartment of one of the Miss Varian's. Practically, Mrs. Varian's acquaintance with literature was confined to the New York interviewer. As she very justly said, after you had read the interviewer, you had lost all faith in culture. Her tendency with this was rather to keep the interviewer out of the way of her daughters. She was determined to bring them up properly, and they read nothing at all. Her impression with regard to Isabel's labors was quite illusory. The girl had never attempted to write a book and had no desire for the laurels of authorship. She had no talent for expression, and too little of the consciousness of genius. She only had a general idea that people were right when they treated her as if she were rather superior. Whether or not she was, were superior, people were right in admiring her if they thought her so. For it seemed to her often that her mind moved more quickly than theirs. And this encouraged an impatience that might easily be confounded with superiority. It may be affirmed without delay that Isabel was probably very liable to the sin of self-esteem. She often surveyed with complacency the field of her own nature. She was in the habit of taking for granted on scanty evidence that she was right. She treated herself to occasions of homage. Meanwhile, her errors and delusions were frequently such as a biographer interested in preserving the dignity of his subject must shrink from specifying. Her thoughts were a tangle of vague outlines from which never had been corrected by the judgment of people speaking with authority. In matters of opinion, she had had her own way, and it had led her into a thousand ridiculous zigzags. At moments, she discovered she was grotesquely wrong, and then she treated herself to a week of passionate humility. <laughs> After this, she held her head higher than ever again, for it was of no use she had an unquenchable desire to think well of herself. She had a theory that it was only under this provision life was worth living, that one should be one of the best, should be conscious of a fine organization, should move in a realm of light, of natural wisdom, of happy impulse, of inspiration gracefully chronic. <gasps> It was almost as unnecessary to cultivate doubt in oneself as to cultivate doubt of one's best friend. One should try to be one's own best friend and to give oneself, in this manner, distinguished company. 
The girl had a certain nobleness of imagination which rendered her a good many services and played her a great many tricks. She spent half her time in thinking of beauty and bravery and magnanimity. She had a fixed determination to regard the world as a place of brightness, of free expression, of irresistible action. She held it must be detestable to be afraid or ashamed. She had an infinite hope that she should never do anything wrong. She had resented so strongly after discovering them, her mere errors of feeling. The discovery always made her tremble as if she had escaped from a trap. Ah! Uh. And the chance of inflicting a sensible injury upon another person presented only as a contingency caused her at moments to hold her breath. I am Tony, and I have been reading from the portrait of a lady. <laughs>